Okay. Hello, I'm Harry, your host at uh, Epistele Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to sciences entrepreneurs and deep tech startups that will change our lives. It's a pleasure to welcome today Dr. Tahere Pakuzi, computer scientist by training, PhD in psychology from the University of Luxembourg, and she is the founder and CEO of Let's Math, an mm -hmm. educa educational tech startup offering the Magrid learning solution. Nice to have you, Dr. Pakuzi. How are you today? Hi, Ali. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, to get the introduction, I'm uh, Tahere Padwiki. I, um, uh, I have background in computer science. I completed my bachelor study uh, in Iran in uh, software engineering. Uh, then after that, uh, in 2012, I came to Luxembourg to continue my master's study in computer science. And uh, then while I was uh, working on my uh, master's study, I found myself uh, highly interested in subjects related to uh, cognitive science and like um, if I want to simply saying is like how uh, do we like how does a brain work how do we learn how do we like from cognitive perspective how do we learn something and how does brain function etc so I try to somehow uh, find departments within the University of Luxembourg to uh, learn but also to uh, somehow redirect myself into uh, that area and to like um, combine the disciplines and to use my background and my like previous knowledge into um, that uh, uh, yeah area and to somehow uh, be useful there. So, so, then, the, yes, sorry, so, so at the very beginning when you started studying uh, computer science and, and IT, uh, you have in mind to, to find a way to apply uh, the, yeah. the training in the, in the education, something like that. Yeah, not specifically in education, but I always knew that I would like to apply it in another discipline and uh, I, I really like just the area of like understanding how brain works and to use the like uh, computer uh, techniques and technology to use it in that area to better understand it and also to create something when uh, combining the two together. So uh, then uh, while I was doing my uh, master's study, I um, searched uh, between the different uh, departments uh, of the university. And then I found uh, the department of uh, cognitive science. And uh, I just simply wrote them. I told them about my interest that, yeah, I'm a, a master's student. I, I am capable of doing this and this and that. And is there something I can help uh, so that I can also learn while working there? And uh, it was, yeah, I was very uh, lucky to get uh, an answer and to like just um, uh, get an answer that, yeah, please come here. Let's have a talk together. And so we can introduce you like the projects we are having and to find uh, your area of interest which I was really surprised by such a very like open answer. I, I was really happy, although I sent this email in, uh, uh, I was like, I was not really hoping to get an answer like this. Uh, I was just on vacation, you know, these type kind of ideas usually come to you when you're on vacation. And then I said, okay, let's just try it and see what comes out of it. And then, uh, yeah, I got the, the like immediate reply that yeah let's talk where are you tomorrow or i don't know the day after and i was like oh that's very cool but okay i'm not in luxembourg let's meet i don't know in 10 days and then uh, when i came back um i had a meeting with uh, uh, romain martin he was back then uh, head of uh, imax department and uh, which he is now today the co-founder of the company we founded together. But at that moment, it was just the person I found online and I sent an email. It, it's really like interesting for me. And um, yeah, he, we had like two hours meeting. He told me about the projects they are having there and the, like what they are working on, their research areas and etc. And I told him about um, 
yeah what i can do how i can somehow optimize the way they are doing with my knowledge from computer science because they were mostly like psychology cognitive scientists and i told him that yeah for example the project that you are working on now i can do it in this way and that could be sort of a like my uh, as a student job but i am just interested in the, in the project itself and uh, so he asked me if i'm familiar with like uh, ios programming which is like programming for um yeah ios devices although i did not do this before like i, I wasn't familiar but i so much liked the project and i didn't want to say no i said yeah i i can do it i i uh, it's uh, yeah that's quite easy and uh, i can do it so just from i guess that after that meeting i started learning about it because i didn't know this before but i so much wanted to be involved that yeah i, I started learning on that and uh, like this student job was for 10 hours a week but to be able to accomplish and to really like having that and not disappointing them to search for someone else i guess i was working more than like 30 40 hours a week to be able to like um, keep the promise i gave so uh, then uh, i it was like somehow the end of my master's study and i told um Roma that i'm interested and i would like to somehow do also my master's study in that area to combine this and he was also very positive and uh, he kind of helped me to define my master's study uh, and and then after my phd project so it was really like all of them starting from um, uh, an interest but then after uh, we also uh, defined within this area my um, the, the phd project which was mainly about uh, understanding how young children they learn mathematics and then how can how can we help them let's say uh, learn it better uh, but not only um, like by let's say normal students but with students who are having some learning difficulties so to find a solution for <clears throat> teaching and learning mathematics for all children, including the children who are typically unserved. For example, uh, in, uh, in like Luxembourg, but nowadays more and more in the other countries, we have the huge number of migrants. And this caused that uh, we have also a huge number of second language learners, or let's say the students who are not familiar with the language of instruction at school. And this makes it that we have like students in the classroom that they just don't understand what the teacher is talking about and then they are about to learn math or other subjects in the language that they don't understand and in luxembourg in cycle one like when students start schooling over 63 percent of students are second language learners so the majority of students they never heard the language of instruction which is luxembourgish before and they have to then learn math uh, in that language which is very which can be very complicated and then that's not only the case but just children who are like from cognitive perspective uh their uh, the, the developmental perspective they are uh like having difficulties with language processing or uh, students with like deaf student or hard of hearing who are having like um uh, uh language difficulties and etc the different groups of students that their uh, difficulty is in another domain but it can somehow indirectly also uh, cause problem on learning math so that was somehow the research question that how can we develop uh, or let's say how can we find a solution for these groups of students and then we started the whole uh, research uh, around the subject to understand that, okay, what are the, uh, the possibilities? And then we came up with a hypothesis that maybe um, language-free training 
uh, could be a solution. And language free training is like a training uh, program that is independent of any languages, so that the child is not dependent on the language proficiency to be able to learn math. So with this idea, you, you have a question? Sorry. Yes, because in fact, uh, so they already uh, deciphered uh, during their own research, background research, that uh, the language could be a kind of uh, entry barrier to... Exactly. To... Very interesting because, you know, even for people who are good in science, uh, I, I, I would say myself, <laughs> yes. uh, I had some sometimes difficulty in uh, at high school or even during university when the problem, the verbatim, you know, the, the text of the problem, Sometimes you have to read it three or four times to really understand what the professor yeah. wants to, to say. So the problem is not just for the children and children having okay. language difficulties for everyone, for, even for yeah. science uh, students in, in university. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, language can be indeed a barrier in, in front of learning and education. And let's say the main goal or that was to try to take out this barrier from uh, math education and given that uh, yeah, mathematical knowledge are uh, built hierarchically, so then you are somehow lacking the basics, then it's difficult to put on top the uh, next uh, block. On top of that, we are working on the uh, very early stage to uh, try to working on the building blocks of mathematics and um, to solve that issue from the earliest moment on, so from really the age uh, the, that the children are entering uh, school, from the age of four or five years old. And uh, so once we started uh, creating this training program in the form of a language free, uh, we were also then studying, uh, or let's say we learned that, okay, uh, apart from the math, as we know nowadays, mathematics, there are all, all also like pre-courses for mathematics. There, there are some cognitive knowledge and cognitive understanding that they could affect uh, math learning. And those are called like visual and spatial uh, uh, abilities that nowadays we call them as the building blocks for math. So they are highly important for uh, learning numerical skills afterward. And in like uh, scientific studies, it shows that students who are um, uh, more familiar with visual spatial abilities, they are uh, working also performing afterward better in math. So if you are training visual spatial abilities, you are also somehow helping in developing math, mathematical knowledge afterward. So it somehow creates the infrastructure, the like the platform uh, to put on top, like uh, preparing cognitively uh, the, the platform that you can afterward learn and digest mathematics better. And because of that reason, we um, for creating this uh, learning application, we started with training uh, cognitive ability. So it's like having uh, two parts, that training application that today we call it MAGRID, it has two uh, parts. It starts with uh, training cognitive abilities in the first place, or let's say uh, training visual and spatial abilities. And then we come to the uh, math, or let's say number specific knowledge. And if I wanna tell you like uh, uh, in a simple word, what are the visual spatial abilities? Those are the type of skills that we are using them in every day of our living, like from finding yourself in a mask or just parking your car or just uh, like it's a different sort of um, processing that you are using from visual processing to uh, like mental rotation, visual perception. So connecting all that together and with your, um, uh, with the output that somehow the work that you are doing, putting this into the word, like copying the shape, if you now then bring it to a, a young children, like uh, for, for copying the shape, this is a type of task that you would need different sort of um, uh, cognitive skills and abilities or like finding 
a shape that is different from the other shape. So there are a wide range of uh, training activities that we somehow implemented and we integrated into the whole uh, Magrid solution and uh, making it, uh, trying to make it uh, like very complete program for the early uh, or like the young children to create the, the basic and the foundation and the building blocks for uh, learning numerical skills and mathematics. So I hope this uh, long. <laughs> no, no, it's fascinating. And uh, how do you position uh, yourself? I mean, the Magrid, the model, and uh, what you offer compared to you know the Singaporean uh, way of teaching mathematics. You know, uh, uh, which type of? Uh, how do you compare yourself, your, your, your methodology, compared to the Singaporean uh, method of teaching mathematics? You know, very famous. You are very famous, yeah. but also in Iran, you are very good at math. Yeah. Um, because by my memory, I know that you are very visual at mathematics. Yeah. We teach, and uh, we, teach, we, talk, we teach mathematics in a very visual model, uh, also to children. Very, that was very different from when I come here in, in France. The mathematics was very, you know, top down, uh, wording, yeah. etc. Yeah. Uh, and we see the results, you know, we have uh, exactly on, on your on those on the soul, Mr. Sani, who was a uh, very ge ge geometrist. Uh, so, yeah. um, this is the, the direct uh, consequence of the way we teach mathematics, yeah. very visual. And so, exactly. how do you position uh, Magritte to the Singaporean way of teaching? Um, Mathematics, or, or even I don't know if you have heard of them. Uh, there are school chain in, in the world called Montessori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very. Um, yeah, I know, I know about yes. it. How do you position yeah. yourself? So before before I answer this question, I will uh, just uh, continue with the story. So once we develop um, uh, the the like Magrid solution, then that was uh, at the time still. Uh, just a hypothesis. So we had like a question and then we had the hypothesis, we created Magritte and then it was the time for testing the hypothesis. So then um, with the solution, we went to uh, 19 uh, Luxembourgish school uh, and then we started testing it on over 300 children, different groups of students like native speaker, non-native speaker and students with, uh, with um, difficulties in terms of hearing and language so different groups and um, then as i already told you before that second language learners given that they just don't simply like they haven't mastered yet the language of instruction from the uh, preschool uh, years there is always this performance gap between native speaker and non-native speaker this due to the um, language barrier there is always this uh, performance gap and then this performance gap continues to grow during the formal schooling and they are always somehow lacking uh, lacking behind the uh, native students so then that was somehow the idea to whether we can close this performance gap and uh, then once we went to like started the testing uh, in schools after the testing period or let's say training testing period. So a group of children, they received Magritte training for uh, like as part of the, the like teaching. And uh, then after that, we compared the two different groups, the ones who received the training with Magritte and the other group. And we saw that was very like interesting to see how significantly they could improve using the Magritte training and this performance gap was then closed so although the testing like pre-test and the post-test that we scheduled they were dependent on language and only the training with Magritte was language independent they could still at this testing level perform uh, like very close to the native speakers and uh, because of that we like uh, received a lot of interest from the teachers that they ask if they can keep uh, Magritte materials in the school for using with their children for the uh, like eight uh, years after. And uh, that's why then the Ministry of Education in Luxembourg, the, the SCRIP, they bought Magritte licenses for all public schools in Luxembourg. 
and uh, on March 4th, like just uh, last uh, two, two, three months ago, on March 4th, it was the launch of uh, Magrit in all public schools in Luxembourg. And uh, so now today, like every primary school teacher, they have Magrit box and every child, they have Magrit account that uh, they, they can use and it's somehow implemented in all the uh, teaching routines of the classroom. So this is um, like somehow the great news that I could share with you. And uh, as somehow the, the uh, market of uh, Luxembourg is uh, more or less at least in the public sector is rich, now we are trying to enter to um, other markets, expanding our market. And now I will come back to the other question that you asked, how can I, how can we position ourselves and how does it differentiate with the other uh, learning methodology? Uh, so first, uh, the somehow uh, biggest distinguishing features of Magrit with the other program is that, uh, if I want to somehow enumerate, is first thing first is that it's language independent and language free so not only that is um, like uh, very visual but there is no sort of text or voiceover so it's like um, no matter where the child is coming from which languages he or she speak they can just take it and use it and learn it and benefit from so at, in the same way that we are now having this in Luxembourg we can like this in this to uh, I don't know Japanese or Chinese students, and they can also um, continue the learning. So uh, this was the case as we gave the material to uh, one of our colleagues uh, that is from India. He just took it to a primary school in India, and then they were using it as simple as that and without uh, any difficulty. So this is somehow the main uh, major distinguishing feature. And after that, I would uh, like to mention to the scientific um, design and uh, implementation and also the, the validation or let's say the results. So maybe this, uh, like many people would say, okay, what, what is the importance from that? Like, why is it so important that uh, like a learning solution is uh, uh, scientifically designed, tested or validated? that I, I can say like from perspective of um, let's say psychologists or developmental psychologists that since children at this age they are somehow very fastly uh, they are developing it's very difficult that you undo something if it's done incorrectly and um, I know that now children are very much imposed into like different media but this can also cause uh, different issues that I know from a, a friend that they were using just an app on the internet for using uh, for, for learning languages and uh, in this app was just one of the app store market applications uh, that uh, in the app to somehow give a hint to a child to say a word I don't know if it was showing the table and the the, the child was, was supposed to like repeat uh, let's say say the word of the, this object, the table, for example. Then the app was saying te, 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 to give the hint to the child to say table. And then just after, I don't know, three, four weeks of uh, using the application, the child came up with this issue and difficulty of like repeating the first letter of the object before completing it. Like, I don't know, saying uh, te, 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 or just everything. And it took like more than seven, eight months of the parents to go into the psychology and the speech therapy to somehow uh, getting rid of that. So that's why I have, for, like, from my perspective, it's so important to uh, like, especially for children, if we are having a learning application or any sort of app that is tested and validated, that not only that it's working, but that it's not going to cause or make any problems afterwards that it can be so uh, easily done. And uh, then talking about the Montessori methodology as they are also very um, like, uh, let's say nonverbal and visual, etc. So I, I was just having last week on Friday, a uh, meeting with Montessori school in Luxembourg. And uh, once my presentation was over, the teacher told me that 
uh, I can change the title of the, uh, the this presentation from Magri to Montessori. So this is exactly the way we are doing. This is very much in line with our learning and teaching methodology. And uh, just the difference is that they are not using any sort of text based uh, program. So everything is like uh real materials with the touching and feeling the things but she said that yeah if uh, for example the parents of children they would ask me for a complimentary uh training program to use at home with the children i would then uh, mention magic to them because it's completely in line with our teaching and learning methodology just that it's uh, implemented into the uh, application so yeah in that regard i would say it's um are very aligned into that as it's uh, about visual learning uh, and the, the idea of somehow learning by doing rather than learning by giving instructions and uh, because we are not developed to just uh, if, if i just think, tell you that yeah what is a square square uh, four lines that are connected together with the angle of 90 degree and uh, so this is too complicated but if i just show you i don't know 10 different uh, squares, then afterwards you can just recognize it without knowing to understand all the complicated words. So, yeah, I hope I'm not talking too much. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Uh, very, it's fascinating. I can hear you for, for, for hours and hours talking about this subject because it's very important, you know. Um, if, uh, in the prospective view, if we can um, allow, enable every children. Uh, to, to be better at math, not to become a, a, a field a medalist, but just yeah. a little bit better, you know, we will yeah, raise the humankind the IQ all over the planet, and this could be a very game changer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I personally look at uh, look at it in, from two different uh, angles. One is that uh, I don't look at math for like, as you said, to like make them medalists or something or like solving not even solving equation problems it's more to me uh, the, the logical thinking and problem solving this is like all math about this is like uh, i don't know like chess simple uh, no language based rule but you can come out with uh, millions of different of uh, way of doing it and all it could all go without saying the simple uh, word it's like as beautiful as that and uh, also now we see like uh, more and more in the society and today even society of tomorrow how important it is to have uh, this kind of skill uh, problem solving and logical thinking and like it's uh, to break down a problem and to, into smaller pieces and be able to solve them and this is all like in in, a, in science we can put it in the math it's not really about doing the equation and also the other thing i uh, for me is highly important is just this confidence that uh children they don't I, I would like that they have this math confidence that is lost now they all have math anxiety and the fear and um, um i see that for example when the teacher is not himself or herself a confident in math then you can also simply give that to the to the students as well or from a parent to children and uh but like math is nothing more than solving puzzles and doing puzzles so i i don't see uh that that could be simply gone by like a right teaching and learning methodology this is uh, fantastic so now let's uh let me talk about how you know, this research and the insight, uh, the outcome of from this research uh, emerged as an opportunity to make it a business startup and how uh, you decided with the PhD uh, supervisor to, 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 to go through this way and, uh, and how the incubator and the entrepreneurship program of Luxembourg University helped you to, 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 to make it a reality. Yeah, so, um... Uh, I told you until that moment that we got the interest from the teacher. It was only a research question, and we just wanted to see it from research perspective. But once we saw that uh, the teacher's feedback, then it uh, came this idea 
uh, came that, oh, okay, this can be a product that <coughs> uh, in, in the market for them to um, uh, use it from. And then afterwards, uh, so then, um, although we were all like from our team, we were just researchers, never experienced with any sort of um, uh, business, we are still very uh, like new to that. So uh, and then we like started with somehow sort of a, a funding that is from uh, the, uh, the FNR, like uh, Fonte National, that's the national funding that is somehow trying to get uh, the research to the industry and they are helping with, um, yeah, trying like, yeah. Uh, connecting these two worlds together. And uh, then of course, with the, uh, uh, the University of Luxembourg incubator, where they uh, help us with different sort of trainings and also the mentoring program that uh, to fill in the, the missing pieces of puzzle that, uh, yeah, you are the challenges that you're facing every day and uh, in, in life, in the business, development, etc. And of course, uh, also the, the, the KTT is like a, a university uh, technology transfer office, uh, where they are also helping us to bring the, the research result into uh, industry and to yeah, turn a, a business and product out of it. So on last uh, September, uh, in September 2020, uh, we founded uh, Let's Math, uh, uh, the, the, the startup uh, company for somehow uh, creating uh, EdTech solutions and uh, where the first product uh, is uh, Magnet for launching Magnet. And uh, yeah, so um, on September, it will, it will be a year that we are officially incorporated and uh, yeah, now today we are like working on expanding the team and uh, somehow also searching for different sort of funding and uh, the, like doing research for the market entry and uh, et cetera, so different <laughs> uh, yeah, places where we still need to learn and also to yeah, work on. And just uh, also very recent news that we could get into the Fit for Start program uh, uh, that is somehow an accelerator program organized by um, uh, Luxembourg Ministry of Economy, I guess, and uh, there they are helping to, uh, yeah, providing you with some training programs to, um, yeah, help you to get out and get to the market. Yeah, also. Uh, I don't know if you know that we became among, like we were selected among the 15, um, yeah, for from the social innovation tournament organized by European Investment Bank. They have also the three months of the training, like the, the summer program. So it's like going to be a, a crazy summertime. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm very much looking to it to, yeah, learn and uh, to excel. What a fantastic uh, journey uh, from Iran to Luxembourg, and what a great uh, startup with a, such an important mission. Uh, thank you very much, Tamare uh, Fakuji. Uh, we, I were very happy to have you today. And if you can conclude, uh, if you can offer some advice to, to, to uh, young students uh, in, in science, in STEM, who want to dream of this, to, to launch your startup, what, what would, would be your advice? Yeah, thank you, Ali, sorry for having me. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And um, I, I'm not an expert to give advice, but if I just want to share uh, my experience with the other students, um, I, uh, the way I look at the whole um, entrepreneurship is as a, a driving at night to a destination that you haven't uh, drove ever before. And uh, so, of course, you don't know like uh, uh, how to get to the final destination. But as your uh, car is moving forward at each moment with the car lighting, just maybe 
a 10 meter, 20 meter in front of you will be lights up. And, uh, but the more you move forward, again, more of the roads will be uh, lighted. So this is the way I see, of course, now when I look at the whole process itself, it's like a very complicated and unknown, and it just looks very scary. But um, like each and every step that I take forward, more steps are getting clear and uh, the roads are getting um, yeah, clear for me. So I guess just this is how it is. And this is like the beauty uh, of the, the whole process. That if you uh, like to challenge yourself, this is the way to go. And uh, yeah, I found it highly interesting because every single day of your living is about problem solving and <laughs> this is what makes it interesting. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here today with me and sharing your story with uh, our audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ari, for having me. Love talking to you. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.